University. Thank you. So thank you all for being here. Uh, thanks uh, SPI and uh, Chicago for having me. So the paper I will present today is part of a broader agenda that aims at um, studying essentially two things. One is uh, how information which is out there about uh, charities activities and effectiveness affects different types of donors. And the second question is what type of information, so uh, among the many types of information that are out there, what information can increase the size of the market for charitable giving? So how would you do that? By baby steps. So the paper I'll present today is co-authored with Jeffrey Horn. He's a friend and uh, uh, grad student at Mason. And we're going to look at a specific type of information, uh, which is the much hatred uh, uh, financial efficiency. So what we're going to look here is how information news, uh, unexpected news about uh, financial efficiency of the charities people donate money to, so existing donors, affect their generosity. So do they increase their giving and do they decrease? And we're interested in identifying different types of donor because we hypothesize that uh, that type of information may have different effects. So uh, very quickly, why studying information now? Well. Uh, back in the days, uh, gathering information, relevant information about charities activities uh, was really hard. And uh, likely the only donors that had the meanings and the uh, incentives to do that were uh, large donors. So if you go in, back in the old days, the only way you could uh, gather information was either to uh, write a letter to the charity and saying, hey, how are you, uh, how are you doing, or um, phoning. Today, uh, we are, uh, there are several watch, um, websites, uh, watchdogs, that provide easy and immediate access to uh, a, a various type of information about charities. So now, even my grandmother can uh, log in and uh, find out how our, the charities she gives money to are doing. And uh, what type is inf of information is out there, and what, again, what type of information should we use? So out there, there's a uh, very uh, large variety of types of information. We have. Uh, more in-depth and targeted uh, information. That's the type of information that uh, watchdogs uh, like GiveWell provide. And uh, there are more synthetic indices like the ones that uh, Charity Navigator provides, which try to synthesize information and provide a snapshot uh, very immediate to donors. So what are we going to use uh, today? Uh, we're going to use a, a single specific measure uh, that comes straight from Charity Navigator, which is program expenses. Uh, so, which is defined as percent of charity's budget, which is spent on the program. Okay, we are aware uh, that that's not the only important thing. Actually, we have a work in progress with uh, Dan Hauser and uh, philanthropist John Behar, where uh, we're looking at how uh, more qualitative information, the type of information GiveWell uh, provides, affects giving. So, what are we interested in? We have essentially two big questions in mind. The first one is how information about charity's efficiency affects uh, donors' generosity. And the second is how the public visibility of that information affects a specific type of donors, which are donors that are uh, mainly motivated by uh, prestige. Okay? Um, so why practitioners should care about that? Well, we think they should care first because improving efficiency uh, uh, requires resources. It's not easy. There are a lot of charities out there to uh, thrive to improve on certain measures, and it doesn't come as a free lunch. So by the way those measures are constructed, you cannot, for example, expand your business without, by definition, by the way in which efficiency is defined, uh, worsening your uh, efficiency. It's important, oh, whoops, it's important also because financial efficiency, of course, is not the only important metric. As we saw yesterday in the uh, main talk, uh, actually there is a, it's a, these types of measures are quite controversial. So the question here is not whether they're good or bad. The point is that they are out there. They're there, they're available, and we want to learn how different types of donors respond uh, to this type of information. Uh, so essentially, it really breaks down to an essential question, which is when you think about the existing donors you have in mind, and you have those in mind, how important it is to improve efficiency and how important it is to advertise it, okay? So, uh, there's a lot of work. We have uh, extensive literature in uh, giving and image. Uh, very quickly, we know that donors care a lot about the prestige effect of your giving. Uh, we know that signals from other donors matter. Uh, we know that the price of giving, so how expensive it is for you uh, to give money, is very important. 
And we know that uh, recent evidence shows that costly information, so do people gather information? Well, when it's costly, not, uh, um, not all the time. So what we do here, we look at real prices of giving greater than one, so cases where when you give a dollar, not the whole dollar goes to the mission uh, you want to fund. Uh, cost as information and social image concern. Okay? So, um, as I said, different types of donor may react in different ways to information. And uh, some of the ways in which they could react are uh, quite counterintuitive. And let me, uh, before introducing the, the design of our experiment, let me give you uh, some example why uh, that could be. So imagine you have two types of donors, okay? You have one anonymous donor is someone that gives uh, not for prestige reason, reasons, but just because he cares about the cause. And then you have one guy that loves shouting how generous he is. So the question is, uh, when those people which are existing donors are surprised by new information, how do they react? So uh, for the sake of example, imagine they both donate for, to a random charity, imagine Red Cross. And now let's ask ourselves, how would they react when they have given money to that charity for a while and now they receive new information, which could be positive or negative? So here's the pointer. Okay, so suppose you're here. And uh, now you receive, and you are a person who is not motivated by image. And you could either receive good news or bad news. Will you uh, increase your giving in the future? Will you decrease it? Or you will keep it constant? So suppose you get a good news. The first uh, hypothesis, uh, it's the most simple. You don't change your giving. You discover your charity is better than you thought. And you say, oh well, good for you. Uh, everyone's happy. And you don't modify your giving. A second uh, uh, reaction we hypothesized that people could have is they actually increase their giving. Why would that be so? Well, because if donors perceive that that piece of information signals something about how deserving is that charity, then you may want to increase uh, the amount of money you give to the charity. So here's the counterintuitive. Would they reduce their giving? Well, we hypothesized that yes. Why? Uh, because of what we call the uh, Mary Poppins effect. So I think most of you are aware, uh, uh, familiar with the old musical where Mary Poppins is a nanny. She goes into a family, she fixes up the family, and as soon as things get better, she flies away and she leaves. So one uh, possible reaction donors may have when they're not motivated by image could be that as soon as they find out that their charity is doing pretty well, uh, they could say, well, I will go away with my money and go elsewhere where my money is much uh, more needed. Very same when they receive a bad news. Okay, so again, we're interested in identifying the effect of information on different types of donors. Another type of donor we care a lot about is donors motivated by prestige. Why do we care information is so important when we think about uh, uh, prestige? Well, as the use of those measures spreads, and so more and more people use that, uh, uh, those measures to compare charities, uh, uh, of course, a donor who gives for image reasons can, of course, ignore that information. But there's no way you can hide it from others. So if I tell you, uh, to give an example from another area, if I tell you that yesterday I had the best meal of my life, and you ask me, well, where did you go? And I tell you, McDonald's. There is a clear and common understanding of uh, some underlying characteristics of that type of fast food, uh, which makes my uh, claim um, uh, non-reasonable. So <laughs> why, why this matters? Well, because if you give money because you care about your image, well, now there's a trick. You have to care not only about the quantity, how much money you give to charities, but also how good they are. Okay? So because both of them now become a social signal. So again, same example. Now you have a guy that gives so a pure image-motivated donor. And uh, what would he do? Receives a good news. Uh, so what we hypothesized? Well, would he increase his giving? Mm, why would he do so? Remember, this guy only gives money because he wants to look good, right? So now there's another additional signal that kicks in, which is positive. And then when he, as soon as he walks out from his door, his neighbor will say, hey, your charity is awesome. I've seen that. So actually, what we hypothesized that he could actually reduce his giving. Why is it so? The reason is slightly different from the other. And it's because for him, again, someone who's purely motivated by image, for him now the cost of looking good has decreased. So if before he had to, uh, to signal that he's a good person, he had to send to provide a lot of money to a charity and then advertise it, now he can give a little bit less. 
Because now we can also say, well, yeah, I give a little bit less, but my charity is very awesome. It's the most efficient charities on the world, okay? So with that type of idea in mind, we built an experiment uh, where we try to reproduce this idea. So you have an existing donor uh, who is shocked by, shocked by uh, a new piece of information, and we want to see how different types of donors uh, react to that type of information. So, uh, okay, so the experiment. Very simple experiments. We have subjects that come to the lab. We endow them with 25 experimental dollars, which are approximately uh, 18 uh, US dollars. We present them with a, a database that includes all the charity listed in charitable, Charity Navigator, okay? And they can pick three. So the interface, of course, the objective was not to have them go through the whole list. It would be uh, extremely painful. But the, the idea behind that, and we wanted them to pick charities either they know or they like, okay? Um, so they pick this three charity, the, the, the program works pretty much like Google. So you start typing the name and you see all the charities that match uh, the name. So you type red and you have all the charities that include red in the name. So then what happens? We ask them to make three independent giving decisions. Okay, so with, with each charity they chose, they, can, uh, they choose how much money they want to send to them. And the three decisions are independent because uh, the, it's, they are made aware from the beginning that only one charity only one decision will be actually implemented, okay? That's phase one. Then surprise, subjects are surprised, pretty much like uh, Sarah's paper before, and we at that point provide them uh, some information and examples about the, the measure we use, which is program expenses, okay? So we explain them what it is, uh, we provide some example how to interpret that, and then we ask them, look, what do you th how efficient do you think your charity is? One, two, three. How each charity do you think uh, is efficient? We incentivize them, so we tell them that if their guess is accurate, uh, they will earn more money. And then what we do, we uh, reveal to them the true efficiency, okay? So what we call good news and bad news uh, will be somewhat a measure of the, how far they are from the true value, okay? And then again, uh, they can revise their decision. So in light of new information, they can choose whether to keep the same donation constant, reduce it, uh, so vary their donation. So again, we're interested in social image. So we have three treatments where we increase, we vary uh, um, the visibility of the actions and things that happen in the experiment to others. So we have, of course, a baseline where uh, everything is private. How much people give is private information. How efficient the charity that they have selected uh, is still, again, private information. Then we move to a treatment where, um, intermediate treatment where uh, people will have to stand up at the end of the experiment and say, for example, I gave 12 bucks uh, to uh, a charity. Uh, just a note, uh, uh, we were concerned that saying the names would have been like, if someone wants to give, really want to give to a religious charity, for example, uh, may have some, I don't know, for some reason he may, that may, may, have, been, may have interacted with the, the fact that they have to announce. So they stand up and they don't have to say the name. So we, are make, we make very clear that they just have to say the amount, but not the name of the charity. And so here we go, boom. The third treatment where we capture this image effect of information, where at the end of the experiment, people will have to stand up and say, I gave $12 to a charity, for example, that is 60% efficient. Okay, so I will, uh, again, the three treatments allow us to identify donors that, uh, for what donors that, so the first treatments pull somewhat, pull together uh, donors that are image motivated and non-image motivated with the idea that image motivated cannot do anything else than what others do because why? Because efficiency has no image value, okay? And then we move to a third treatment where so social image now, uh, the information now has a, a social image effect. So I will show you result treatment by treatment. So uh, again, now treatment where everything is private. How many Mary Poppins are out there? Uh, well, actually zero, okay? So here you read this graph exactly as you, uh, the example before. Uh, those are donors that did not modify their giving after news is received. These are donors that increase their giving, and these are donors that receive the bad news and decrease their giving, and so. So, one note, uh, all the graphs I'm gonna show you, these are unconditional giving, in the sense that this guy, for example, we don't know if it's someone that, in this graph, all donors that move from zero donation to $5 donation 
are pooled together with donors that move from $5 to $10, okay? Uh, when we look at the data and it's in the paper, you see that the composition is pretty uh, equal. So we have 40% of donors that move from zero to uh, something positive and the others, but the results are essentially the same. And all the results I'm showing you are significant. So result one, we have no Mary Poppins out there. Uh, when good news in an environment where all decisions are private, when good news are received, uh, all donors, uh, uh, well, of course we have some donors that do not modify their giving, but then you have uh, donors that increase the giving, and the difference between tr for this treatment is, signif is uh, significant, less than 5%, okay? And the magnitude, I'm sorry, uh, I realize now that I missed it. So we're talking about uh, increases between one and two experimental dollars, okay? And uh, the second result is you see that bad news is disregarded. So when everything is private, you don't see, uh, almost no see uh, reaction to uh, bad news. Uh, I don't have time to go through that, but this is quite consistent with results from other areas of decision making where we see that people essentially don't like bad news. And so as far as they can, they just ignore it. Uh, so now we move to our intermediate treatment where uh, now efficiency is still private, so it has no uh, image value. And now donation is public. What you see is a, exactly the same trend. Okay? So you see that good news is still rewarded. Again, this is statistically significant. And now you see that bad news are starting. This is marginally significant. Some donors start to um, uh, punish uh, a little bit. So what happens when uh, we move to the third treatment where image starts to have a, a social signaling value? So we see that that relationship breaks down. Okay? So we still see some donors that do uh, reward good news and some donors that punish uh, bad news. But now you see a new type of behavior that was not present in the other treatments where you see some donors reacting to good news by decreasing their uh, generosity and a uh, few donors that uh, um, increase their giving bad news. Okay? So what's going on in this treatment? Um, so again, some donors reward. And those guys here on the, this odd axis uh, represented 34% of subjects. Uh, among those that changed their donation, so among those that modified their giving, 34% ha uh, shows this uh, odd behavior that was not present again when efficiency uh, had no image value. Okay. So what, what is going on? I uh, don't have time to go through the details, but uh, so we, we analyzed behavior of subject that uh, show this behavior that was not present before. And so what do they, are they behaving in a different way in phase one and phase two? Remember that in phase one, uh, we constructed the experiment such that in phase one, the only information available to donors is that they will have to stand up and announce how generous they were. They know nothing about efficiency, okay? So if these guys are image motivated, well, what we would expect uh, uh, is that in phase one, if those guys are relatively more image motivated, what those guys would do is in phase one, use as much as they can the only signal they have, which is what? How much they give. And in fact, we find that donors that are here that have at least one observation in these odd quadrants, what they do is that in phase one, they give significantly more than not only other subjects here, but all subjects also from the other treatments, okay? So, uh, take with a grain of salt the last thing I said because of course the problem is that in other treatments image motivated and non-image motivated are pulled together. Okay, so the really meaningful comparison here is within treatment, within this treatment. But then what happens is that as soon as they discover that there's a new piece of information out there uh, they can use to um, promote their image, boom, they start reducing uh, their giving in phase two as soon as they realize that uh, they have a cheaper way uh, to look good. So the way we interpret that, again, is that image motivated donor trade off the quantity of their giving with the quality of their recipient. Again, this idea that as, as, as soon as information becomes, yeah, I'm done. As soon as information becomes common knowledge, then you may have this effect that existing donors, again, this experiment is uh, framed in a way that um, we're looking at existing donors. And, um, may trade off um, two things. So conclusions, uh, we see that when uh, new information about financial efficiency has no image value, we find that donors reward high efficiency and only marginally uh, punish worse than expected uh, charities. 
Then what we find, we find that existing donor, prestige motivated donors may trade off uh, the quantity of giving with the quality of giving. But there is a but, of course. And the, uh, the note is that this experiment doesn't tell us anything about what would happen with new donors. Because remember that in our experiment, you can modify the, the size of your gift, but you cannot choose new charities. So the big question we're working on now is, uh, so we find this effect for existing donors, but would high efficiency attract new donors in the pool? So donors that were uh, before not willing to, so even image motivated donors that have a different threshold would now be willing since this, uh, it's getting cheaper to get into the market, would they do so? So uh, we need further research to understand uh, uh, whether the overall effect uh, when you consider the market as a whole is, po is positive or negative for image motivated donors, but um, that's why we are so far. So, I'm obliged by law uh, to tell you that I'm on the market this year. Yeah. So uh, if you ever want to find out a little bit more about me and my work, please visit uh, my website. And I assume most of you will receive my application quite soon. So, <laughs> and uh, thank you very much. Any questions? So um, when you explained the efficiency measure, mm -hmm. did you offer any caveats as to why it might not be perfect? Uh, we did not. We framed it in a very neutral way. So we said this is one of the measures uh, used by this uh, website. We made clear that this is no, not the only metric, and we invited them afterwards, of course, not during the experiment, to figure out what are the other uh, variables they use to produce the, the index okay. indices. Uh, I, th I think that they include um, uh, inadequate qualifications about new charities and other things like that may have higher costs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, that is possible. So you're making it as pure a case. So any effect you find would be, you'd predict, a little bit bigger than what Charity Navigator would find. Yeah. And again, of course, uh, so one, things I, uh, one thing I didn't mention is that, of course, one of the concerns when you analyze the data is that you want to make sure that both within, uh, within treatments and between treatments, the way people form guesses and the charities they pick, because again, we had a trade-off, so do we let them choose the charities they want or we provide them, which is another technique that's largely used. And we opted for the, this one. But now, of course, the problem is that what happens when you have one guy that picks, by chance, uh, three extremely efficient charities and one guy that gets very unlucky. And so we find that overall, both between and within, uh, guesses and efficiency is comparable. And um, of course, this is not a perfect measure, but the objective of the experiment was to see how different types of donors respond to this information. So, um, did I get one follow? -up? Did you look at um, different different treatments for the three different charities that a person chose? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, well, I guess I'm looking at possibly the prestige motivated would give more to the charity that got the news but less to the other charities on their list. That's a very good point. And uh, so one of the problems would be you get good news on average, but then you're image motivated. And so you say, well, I'll gamble. I'll decrease uh, giving to charities that are relatively less efficient compared to the one. But those charities are not doing bad. Actually, they're good news. Uh, we find that there, um, we, don't find, we don't find that. So in the paper, we show that. It's not, the effects we find is not a compensation, but um, it's not that th this is what's going on. It's going on, but it's, um, yeah. All right? So thank you very much. Uh, last oh. question. Yeah, go. The practitioners in the room, what would be your advice to them based on what you found not to display information? Uh, so the advice I would give is uh, think carefully. Uh, the advice I would give uh, and is that uh, the type of donors you have matters. So uh, information is good, and in general, we have shown that for a specific type of donors, which are existing donors, uh, this type of information, on average, doesn't harm. But uh, you have to think carefully about what motives are behind uh, the pool of your donors, because we find that uh, there may be this effect uh, that uh, may go in the opposite direction you would find. But good news, no Mary Poppins. So if you think your donors are really passionate, uh, we don't expect to see any strange reaction to positive information. Thank you.